Good morning, all. Margot, do you want me to enable you to share the screen or do you want me to share screen from, from here? If you can hear me. Unmute there, um, I'd like sharing screen. I'm going to need to share my screen at some point. I don't need to write this second. Okay, well, what I'll, so I'll put the agenda on the screen, but whenever you're ready, you can, I'll just allow you to share. So. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Really getting sunny this morning. Trying to work out the extreme glare in my screen because of the sun. Morning. Good morning, Dana. How are you? Good. Good. Trying to, like I said, I'm trying to work out. It's so sunny, and I have just windows all around me, all this glare. Yeah, I had to go sit somewhere else today. It's just so bright. It is. But we're not complaining. No, and I have <laughs> to sit here because this is the location where my puppy feels You're... calmest. <laughs> if I'm... Are we able to see the puppy or that's too hard to move the screen or? Um, let me just bring her over. Very big now, so I can hardly lift her. I hardly lift her. She's so oh big. Oh my goodness. Ziggy, wait, 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 Ziggy, move your face. There oh, we go. oh my gosh. So, so cute. So she's she's over 30 pounds and she's 13 weeks. So she just keeps growing. Yep. <laughs> Not surprised, I'm sure. No, she's What's her name again? Her name is Ziggy. Good. She's just wondering what I did. So is she a high energy breed or I don't know that much about them? No. <laughs> She's, uh, she will end up a very large dog. So they Because I know my sound on my computer is terrible. Um, yeah, so she's pretty, she'll be pretty low, you know, energy once she's fully grown, but she's, she's still puppy. <sighs> yep. Morning, Tim and Keely and Matt. Morning. Good morning. Another beautiful day in Harbor Springs. All right. It is. No, so is, is skiing still any good or what? It is. I went yesterday. Did you? Yep. Good. Wow. I'm <laughs> I'm not a not a diehard downhill skier, so I uh this is about the time when I end. I started in about mid January and then, and end at this point. I like to cross country ski. Probably better exercise than downhill skiing. Well, I don't know. I, I just like to be warm. <laughs> so. right. 
Morning, Nikki. Morning, guys. How are you? Hey, Nikki. Good. Hey, Kyle. Kyle. Seeing people pop on. Hello. Yes. Good morning. Hello. I see now Amy, Kathy, Jody, Josh. I see Josh's name. There he is. I did not hear back from Brian of whether he was going to be on the meeting. And, I, you know, he's down in sunny Florida. So, um, good morning. Morning, Jody. Good morning. Where's the bread for everybody, Kathy? <laughs> right here. <laughs> bread baking morning. What kind is it today? This is a first for, I use a flower out of Illinois, a tiny mill, and this is with sifted artisan. It's the first loaf I've done just with this one flower. Usually I mix two or three flowers. So oh, never sure. two in a row the same. And Lindsay used to laugh at me when I said I got my soap from North Carolina. <laughs> Okay, who else who else are we waiting for? Um Nikki's here. Hi Nikki. Hey Jody, how are you? Good, how are you, dear? Good, thank you. Uh Nikki, it's Josh. I gotta talk to you about boots. Oh. Did you send me a message about boots? I did not. I already bought some. So I bought some from you guys. So uh uh. Chocolates? No. Oh no. Okay. Not me. Maybe Nikki DeVette? Mm. Oh gosh, I don't know. Well, it makes me feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> like I just bought some from your place about a month ago. Two pairs. Okay. Some, okay. Oh, geez. Now I got to go. Huh. Okay. All right. It's 30. I think we've got a, a good group here. Perhaps Thank all that. So I will call the meeting to order and Margo, if you would do the roll call, are we supposed to say where we are also like council does or does it matter for us? Council has to say Ian Harbor Springs. Victor. I think we're all in Harbor Springs. Yeah. So I'll yes, you do, you do have to say where you're located. Okay, all right, that's a new one then. All right, let's all right. go ahead. Um, Kathy Breitner. Yes, in Harbor Springs. Matt Bugera? Uh, yes, Harbor Springs. Tim Knapp? Here, Harbor Springs. Josh Baker? Harbor Springs. Jody Eubank? Yes, Harbor Springs. Nikki Law? Yes, Harbor Springs. Anna Mulder? Yes, Harbor Springs. Brian Bedini? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. And you are where, Brian? Mount Dora, Florida. Okay. You want to trade places? <laughs> no. <laughs> Amy Gillard. I'm, yes, Harbor Springs. Keely Knapp. Yes, Harbor Springs. Okay. So it looks like everyone is here. Perfect. It's been a while since we've had us all. So welcome everyone. And if you've noticed for this meeting, we actually have sunlight outside. So things are on the upswing. It's going to be a great couple of months ahead of us. We've got a lot to dive into. So let's do that first by starting with public comment. If anyone's on any of the either YouTube or what? Zoom. Oh, we didn't, we didn't approve, did approve the, the minutes. minutes. You're right. Okay. Uh, minutes. Let's back up a step. Minutes from the February 4th meeting. We've all seen them. Comments, corrections. If not, a nod for approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Aye. Aye. Now let's move into public comment. 
And if none, let's move into with number five, our COVID-19 updates and issues. Okay. Um, so the main update is that the city passed ordinance uh, to uh, 2021 01 on Monday night's council meeting. And that was the same um, ordinances, the, the alcohol in um, the park, um, to go, taking to go um, beverages and all that that we had last summer. And so that has now been reinstated um, for, as I asked the other night, Victor, correct me, it's starting, it's, it's in place now, is that correct? That's correct, it starts now. Is there an end date to that? November 1st. But at that time, Victor, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that you would look, or the council would look at whether or not they continue that or not. I mean, but this could, this particular one ends at that time. Is that right? Yes, this is a temporary administrative ordinance which lasts till November 1st. The council and the planning commission have the opportunity if they want to, to make any of those changes permanently or to extend them into the following year. Okay, thanks. Yep. The only other update that we have is that um, the governor spoke and now has made um, an adjustment to her previous orders. So dining is now open to 50% in the restaurants. Um, it covered a whole slew of things. And um, it, in addition to opening up board meetings um, in person, along with gatherings of, I think it's indoor. Um, 25, we can meet. Yeah. So perhaps we can meet together in April. Well, we do not have an April, just a reminder, we do not have oh. an April, April meeting, but, but okay. May, but All right. May um, okay. yes. So that, that's where we are with that. Um, and um, I didn't know if we wanted to talk about outdoor dining for the, the summer months in this part, or we could, we could push it till later till we're into the more of the downtown enhancement committee, either, either way. I'm wondering if the Marina Park Committee is going to be looking at this also. So are we doubling efforts? We are. I, I have had, re I've received a lot of comments um, in addition to the survey, the parking survey that I sent out um, as far as different restaurants and, and reaching out to me saying they would love to readdress um, either parking spot, you know, outdoor dining or another outdoor dining location. I know that that's first and foremost on the Marina Park, um, you know, uh, agenda. But it's also there's been talk about do we want to close a, a side street or a state street or or the farmers market area again um, um, for um, outdoor dining this summer. Margo, I just kind of. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's the interpretation. The Marina Park Committee, they're only focusing on that space and what to do with that space this summer uh, and, and the long term. So outdoor dining is going to be part of that, but there might be other recommendations the DDA might have. And it also might be just useful for the DDA to say we support outdoor dining in the Marina Park area as well as these other areas. So that's, that's, a, that's a great point. And the Downtown Enhancement Committee did discuss this um, in our most recent meeting. And the consensus was largely to continue to focus on Marina Park for outdoor dining. We did such a wonderful job last year with the extra picnic tables and it was well used. And maybe we should just better promote that, which would be quite easy to do. And know that people who come here want to sit and look at the water. So sure, a blocked off section of the street was great, but it's, you know, I always find it strange to be in a city where their outdoor dining is looking at cars. I would much prefer looking at what we have, which is gorgeous. So that's just my take. I have had a couple people reach out to me asking again, and they're like, like Dan at Willow um, has asked about outdoor park, outdoor um, dining, possibly in his parking space or his sidewalk. He does not have the same 
uh, restrictions as being on state on the, a state road as main and main street is i don't know if that's something we want to to help him or encourage him uh to reach out to council on are you talking similar is he talking similarly to what they did in batoski at like tap 30 and 4 this year he's talking or about last year. more like charlevoix like where they're using the parking spots in front of their their buildings Okay, yeah, Batoski did that too for TAP 30 and a couple other places. Okay. okay. Yeah. Does this so, question go before Planning Commission first or would, Council? It would have to go before Planning Commission, but I don't know how we, you know, if we want to support him in any or, you know, advocate for him in any way. I mean, I would, I would support all types of outdoor dining. I, I think I, agree. Do it. I think it's a great yeah. thing and the little areas in Petoskey that Nikki talked about in front of those restaurants, you know, where they take one or two parking spots. I know in the summer there's always a discussion about parking, but I think it's more important to get these restaurants the, the seats that they need, as well as as a patron. I think it's great to be able to go and sit down there. So I would say we, if we send a, a letter to the planning commission or the council saying that we support all types of outdoor dining. As far as the farmer's market, I think it's a great idea, but I think, I mean, I would I would ask the restaurant tours what what they want to do, because if they're not going to go send staff over there, then, then I don't want to waste time doing it. So what do they want? Because they would be the ones doing it. The only I was thinking thing, the same thing with that. The only thing that on that, with, a, with the only, with, with us only focusing on Marina Park, for outdoor, you know, to go dining is that I do know that some of the the restaurants north, you know, uh, you know, on on Main Street do feel that they're not quite as represented there, and you know, is there another space that we, you know, want to also look at? That's that's just the feedback that I've gotten from some people. Well, In our, our point, I also spoke that it could be real cute, like if you're driving into downtown Harbor Springs to see festival lighting, you know back and forth across the street down by where farmer's market is and see some tables out there. Um, but would that, you know, we could leave the lights up, but then would we need to move the tables? Um, do we want to yes. do it all the time? You know, I think it, there's just more logistics involved with that. I would agree with that. If I'm, if I'm Jody, I'm super happy with where the outdoor dining is and I would be too. But if I'm, if I'm, up north, you know, farther north, and I, I don't have something where, yeah, if we can use fine space, I don't know where, where we could put it. I mean, we could talk to the church about putting it in that parking lot on Friday, Saturday night or something. But you come down to who's going to move the tables back and forth. And I still think that people are, would choose water over a parking lot. And we've gotten so accustomed to take out it's been such a wonderful addition to our community. Walking two blocks to a water area doesn't seem to be horrible. Um, that's a different issue than the parking spaces, perhaps. I do think we should dive into that for the restaurants that want to. I do too. And we need to figure out what the process is for that to happen. Well, um, that's something we that, well, that's something that possibly since Petoskey was so successful and they had a plan on it, I don't remember all the details. Chandler and I talked about it a little bit last year because I was curious on how it worked. And I know that there was a plan and it was presented to him through the chamber. So that could be something or through their DDA also, but that could be something that we possibly maybe reach out to the Petoskey, to Nikki Devitt and ask kind of how they did it. I know that there was a fee attached and there was some options there, um, but the, the people that did take advantage of it anytime that I was in Petoskey, I mean, granted it wasn't much last summer, but you know, the, that outdoor area in front of poor and tap 30 was always, it, was. it would be nice to give an option. I mean, I know that when it was brought up last year, people were a little hesitant because they didn't want to take the parking spaces, but I think it's more important to be able to give the option of more seats to a restaurant than if we lose a couple parking spots throughout downtown. I agree. I, mean, I would agree. Yeah. People can walk to get, but I don't, our restaurants need whatever support can be given for the summer because it's obviously not going to change the summer. So. So maybe the first thing, as Kathy said, is to get a procedure for the restaurants um, to apply for something like that. 
Well, and maybe, yeah, like I said, maybe reach out to Nikki and I mean, I'd be happy to reach out to her and ask how they did it. Nikki, was that, that for the chamber or was that, no, or that was through their downtown management board, correct? It would be Becky. It was at their DDA. They yeah, did it. through the chamber was involved in promoting it and helping. I know Nikki sat in on some of the stuff on how they put it together because it was through like, there was a fee attached that was paid to yeah, the yeah. city and to the downtown area. Um, and Cheryl yeah, always you know, done that too. A joint project between the two, two entities. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's a better contact person that would have a better idea, then absolutely. So is this, I, this should sorry. be a priority though, because it's gonna take them a while to get things approved, you know, with our um, once a month meetings. And so I would say, let's move that up to the top of the list. Is this, is this applicable only to people off of Main Street 119? Good question. I mean, Are we allowed that, to do, I thought we said the city owned the parking spaces and uh, the actual roadways uh, owned by the state. I don't think we own them. I think we have easement rights to them. Victor, can we take a parking space for dining on Main Street? You know, we should have started the, there. <laughs> you, we can't do it on Main Street. Can. Cannot. We can't. We, no. we just have to, we just have to be careful. Department of Transportation won't let you take the parking spots. Okay. So this so this then affects uh, Willow. So it affects no. three Just restaurants. Paper, paper Station and Turkeys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Paper Station and Turkeys, but it, so it could be beneficial to potentially to the to the New York Depot, Bar Harbor, uh, Bar Harbor, Willow. And Willow. Willow. It's Willow that's specifically asking. So you've got four. Yeah. And that's near waterfront too. Let's let's see how we can do this. I think we need to figure out maybe uh, Margo, you and Victor can figure <laughs> out what the steps are to do uh, uh, approach all the restaurants and see who's in line to want to do this, and then figure out what the planning commission's role is. And I'm sure it has to go to council too. But it is March, so we need to move on this. So what's the move? I will definitely reach out to Becky over at the downtown management board in Petoskey. And if Nikki, if Nikki wants to reach out to Nikki Devitt, that's, that's great um, too. I think we need to find out our, the, for me, the number one would be who wants to do it besides Willow, hopefully everyone. Uh, and then number two, what our city process is to approve this. And then while we're uncovering <laughs> that, we can figure out what we want to you know, what regs we need to put in place, what we need to charge. And we can get that from Petoskey or Charlevoix or others who've done it. But I think number one is participation and then, then our calendar protocol for Harbor Springs. Well, we have one, we have one Bay Street restaurateur. I mean, is this on, Good. is this something that you even, I'm, I'm speaking to Matt. I mean, I know Dan at Willow would like to, is this something you would even consider, Matt? Um. Yeah, actually, I mean, if it was a, a full-time deal for the summer, the issue with outdoor dining for me in the past has been a, um, if I did it on the sidewalk, I had to move all the stuff, yeah. you know, the tables and chairs. And, um, but if it was a full-time dedicated spot on the street where I could leave the stuff up all the time, I'd be in for that. But, Good. Yeah, that's that's only that's been my only hesitation in the past. Okay. So that's two. So we would need to approach Bar Harbor. Um, Bar I'm Harbor not sure how, about Pearson's. Depot. They've got a pretty nice. They have space, their own but, space, but Pearson's that, wife. But that's enough to get us space. rolling. I can talk to. I see Chandler this week, so I can chat with him to see if it would be something he'd be interested in for uh, Pearson's. Uh, uh -huh. And then I, I would say we would want to be nimble with this just because it is March. I know last year um, council was cognizant of that, realizing that we might not be able to take three months to make this move and, and be quick and, you know, be a, you know, once you get your stuff, uh, Margo and Nikki, if you just want to email this committee, we can all say thumbs up, let's get a, a letter of recommendation to planning commission or wherever needs to go next. I just I I sent Nikki. I sent Nikki a message, so I'll forward any information that I get to Margot. Um, 
Then and why then don't we, we let the downtown enhancement committee take this after we get things rolling, if we're all okay with that. Great. One other thing I'd like to bring up too is, um, I think it might be nice for maybe the promotions committee to do something with the restaurants about um, uh, communications with people that are taking carry out and where they can go to eat it. Like does, do visitors to town know that the best place to go is Marina Park? So that could be like a joint chamber DDA thing as well. I would say that the beach picnic area was really busy last summer with takeout. Yes, and that too, but just so there's some communications, maybe there's like posters in the windows or um, yeah. something like that. More signage. Yeah, and then this oh, I'm sure will come up with a <laughs> marina park. Joking. Committee. But we're also going to need to um, arrange for, uh, you know, trash cans. And then we'll have the picnic tables there, of course, but just so we have the infrastructure for the dining. Right. Okay, I Margaret. I have a question that has always... Um, It's, it's related to 4th of July and what people set up on the waterfront. Uh -huh. Like right. tents and kegs. I mean, are we just okay with that? Cause it's a 4th of July. That's a question for Victor and for Kyle. Kyle. Do we need to address this? No, in a, in a no. separate thing. It's yeah. a separate yeah. issue. Okay. <clears throat> I will uh, do what council directs me. Um, uh -huh. kegs, I've, so the three years I've been here, I've not seen a keg. I've seen open alcohol um, up there, but I've also seen open alcohol there prior to last year with COVID. I've seen open alcohol in that green space on a on a weekend basis as well. But no, I know what you're saying. Um, Maybe the marina, the uh, harbor commission should look at it as well. But I, I don't want to drag. I think Bill McCullough is online. Well, I, 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 Julie, I do agree that it's something we should talk about. But is it is it is the proper place in the outdoor dining section of our our agenda? Okay, but just for future, I mean. What I see is, and I have seen, and prior to you, Kyle, is, yeah. uh, you know, eight to 10 of those, of those 12 by 12 tents that are set up all along the, all along the water. And they're parked there for the entire day. And their, their reasoning is then they've got the top spot for the fireworks at night. Yeah. No, I agree. Kind of like the chairs. Chairs on Main Street for the parade. Yeah. So anyway, I, I did just put it in the back of your mind, and you know, cool. if nobody cares, it's okay. But, but I, I see it a lot, and I don't know if you know. It's it's one thing. I mean, are we gonna? Will we call that the social area? That means it's okay for them to bring a 12 pack of their own and sit in the social area and drink? Good question. I think that's last, the ordinances. Last year it was okay. As long as you had a bag of potato chips with you. Yep. <laughs> I well, already put my with... chairs out for the July 4th parade. Is that a problem? I just put them in the back, Tim. You're out of luck. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Uh, let's let's dive into this later, Jody. It's a good topic, and we should probably look into it. But we've got other stuff to plow through today as well, if that's okay. okay. All right. Yes. Uh, let's, next into the promotions committee, then, and um, Ice Fest update. Great. Yay! Yes. So Ice Fest was a very big success for us this year. We had I, I felt like we had a really good turnout um, in. Um, into town, even though we didn't have live demonstrations and all of that, we um, had, I think, even though it was an extremely cold weekend, which was benefited us. I mean, the, I think the fire pits out were a nice addition and really set a nice atmosphere. 
um, something that we should definitely consider for next year. So when we look at the budget, um, we brought in $17,550 um, into, into from the ice fest. And then once we go through all of our expenses, Victor, you wanna scroll down just a tiny bit? I think there we you go. did a great job, great job with advertising too, Marco, with um, TV spots and uh, newspaper and social media. Thank you. So, I think the whole, yeah, well done the whole way around. So great. as you can see, we, it looks like we're going to be bringing in close to $6,500. Um, obviously, that would be, you know, it might not be as much in next year if we're looking at, you know, you, um, doing larger demonstrations and using some of that income to to do some of those um, those big demonstrations and bigger carvings, but for this year, I think it was it was a great a great um, turnout and great response. Um, because of the way the weekend fell, um, the the week prior, like it is next year, I can get those hotel rooms for nothing. Oh, yeah, I don't think we, yeah, I don't think we land on President's Weekend again for, no. I think, quite a few years, which is, you know, how we originally intended that, just so we have a busier weekend, yep. you know, in town for the merchants, and then hopefully next year, the event can go back to the event that it was previously. One thing we discussed in the promotions committee, what is that, um, We'll just, it'll be kind of fluid looking at what we do next year, where, where we're at. If we think that a chili cook-off would be, a, you know, would even go over in 2022, or maybe that's something we can do demonstrations, but maybe we don't do a chili cook-off. So I think it's, it's, I think the whole festival still needs to kind of remain fluid and, um, and open to what, you know, what, what the circumstances are for 2022. But I definitely think um, this showed that we can do it and we can do it safely. Um, the new segments went really well. Thank you to everybody who came out really early. Um, that was fun and cold, but cold. Um, <laughs> I, I think a note for next year too is the interactive uh, thing down by the, the picture frame was cute. So maybe if we try and sell some more of those, it would be good. Well, I was hoping, I mean, my, the goal for next year is the park where we usually have like the snow shoes demonstrations and um, we had the ice bikes from Boyne. Um, my hope is, is that we can, and I have one sponsor already that's willing to sponsor one of the big interactive pieces, um, cool. is that we can turn that into more of an interactive park where they have a lot of interactive displays. They have an ice bowling, which has been something I think would be a lot of fun. They have tic-tac-toe boards, they have ice couches. We could have an ice bar that Kava used to sponsor when it was down at Ice and Spice Festival. So there's lots of room in that park. And um, since the fire pits were something that can be done, we could move the fire pits and maybe make a bigger one and have s'mores and stuff like that. So there's ways to grow this event if we're able to going forward into next year and really utilizing that park with the snowshoe demonstrations and the other things that we had in there before, but make it a place where people want to stay. Sounds good. Definitely. Great. Victor, if you want to scroll down, I don't know if you just, if any of, if you all saw it in the newspaper, but it ran the thank you ad, thanking all of the, um, the uh, sponsors, the- That was very nice. The premier sponsors and then, and then the local sponsors as well. You know, Nikki, I, I, I absolutely agree with you, but, always in the back of my mind. Um, I don't know if you remember when we tried to do wintervention mm -hmm. and it was like 25 degrees below with the wind chill. Yep. And poor Cindy and Mary Catherine and Rachel were all in different areas. We were doing like broom ball and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and just nobody came out because it was so bitterly like frostbite cold. You know, we're always at the mercy of the, we're always at the mercy of the weather, no well, matter what. Well, and that's something that we're gonna run into anytime we're gonna do an outdoor event. I mean, we could run totally. into it this year, um, but the one good thing about this versus the wintervention year 
is this already has, this will be, you know, four years next year. So it already has established some legs underneath of it and people know it, people are talking about it. We were, we were nominated in Red Hot's best for best event. I know. Um, against some big events, which was really cool. So I think growing it a little bit would be, would be kind of fun. If, if COVID allows, which hopefully it will. Oh, let's dive into this towards the end of this year when that committee comes back together, like what, November-ish? Um, can, you, can you give me um, the sharing screen? Now? Uh, can, can I, I can't say that correctly, but could I, could I have the sharing screen at, at this point? Right, we did uh, talk about in, oh. I was going to say we did talk about engaging um, much sooner than November. Yes. Because, uh, for example, the Visitors Bureau needs, you know, they want information um, 90 days out. And we'd love to be able to make those decisions earlier, um, just in terms of, yes, what we're, yes, we're going to have it and then work on the details. So, yes. We're great. So, I wanted to pull up Amy, thank you so much. Um, created this based this on some amazing. of the the events that, you know, the events that she does with Cecil of the book, giving us a template to work through with, and, and everyone should have access um, to this. It's on the same Google sheet that um, the, uh, the, the main spreadsheet for the sculptures is, is um, so you can go, you can access it, add things, add them, add mm. the smaller events or things that, and sure. try, as we think of things that we want to do Wonderful. A timeline for it and giving us a time to really get start meeting, you know, end of spring or beginning or in summer to really look at where, where we need to be on each thing as we move forward for the for next year. So, Amy, this is awesome. Thank you. And I so think it'll good. give us a lot of organization yeah. going forward Thanks, on this Amy. event. You bet. My pleasure. Don't recreate the wheel if you don't have to. Exactly. <laughs> but right. you can see yeah. it still says... Festival website, so we need to modify that, but that's yeah. okay. I just got and paid, yeah. So. That's great. That's great. Um, I just noticed yesterday, I don't know if it was in the paper or on Facebook. Um, would it behoove us to try to hit up the uh, Toski Harbor Springs Foundation for a grant for this festival? They don't normally fund festivals. They what? The a community foundation doesn't normally fund events. Oh. Yeah, it has to be zero. Yeah, it has to be very, very, very specific, more tangible things for the foundations to jump in. So. So it wouldn't more, be like they could sponsor. Yeah, they don't John do sponsors. John Cups building a fire pit. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Okay. If it was a if it was a permanent structure that was going to stay forever, but they don't um, they don't do sponsorships at all, and for this kind of event, that's what they would look at is as unless it's a permanent structure type thing. Now, possibly approaching them in a grant cycle, depending on the parameters of their wording for that cycle, for picnic tables for the marina park for outdoor dining, yes, uh, but for something that comes and goes, no. Adirondack chairs. Sure. Yeah. One thing that also came up in the promotions committee um, was we talked about possibly re ad or addressing, do we want to do a future festival, another, another seasonal festival, say a, a fall festival like the Brew Fest. Nikki and I talked about a lot about that. And then we brought it up in the um, promotions committee and we just need to see where the, board feels about doing something like a fall festival. I think it'd be loads of fun. Fall stuff, you know, apples and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of good examples in uh, other communities that we could look to. One of the problems might be that if we got, let's just say Nikki and Kathy and Jody and Amy and Dana and Tim, then and Margo, then every time we have a meeting, we can't have that meeting because we have a quorum. Oh, we can make it public. I have no problem with that. Oh, you know, okay. just, just post it, make it pu pu public. We can oh. do that. Okay. 
I, so, I will, well, we don't we don't need a summer festival. We've got so much going on already. No. Well, and, uh, well, and, and spring at spring in Harbor Springs is really rough. I don't think a spring festival, I think an outdoor spring festival would be difficult. Well, to we've up. done so when we did the brew fest, um, I think it's been two, three years ago now. It's gonna be three years this year that we did it. We took it over from the chamber. Um the brew festival had always been pretty successful in the past. And it was it was literally just that. It was a brew festival. It wasn't it, you had to be 21 and older. There was a fee at the door. Um, with, with a brew festival or anything where there's going to be any kind of alcohol, like a beer tent or anything like that, you know, with the Michigan Liquor Control Commission rules and regulations, things change a little bit as far as sponsorship. So you really have to make your money selling the tickets at the door. But, you know, Margo had a really good idea that we could have a smaller section instead of taking the entire park for, you know, a beer area, we could integrate it where as long as the Michigan Liquor Control Commission's rules and regulations haven't changed, that as long as we have a designated entrance and exit, that we could also incorporate it into a little bit of a family event as well. But again, with COVID, um, this is something that, you know, again, like Margo said, you have to be a little fluid with, with whether or not it's even gonna be something that can be done in the fall. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, the other thing too that I think we have to remember um, is that if we looked at a fall festival, there's already two events that are happening um, in that in, in the September. weekend in yeah. September. Um, so, would we create something that would have to go in October? And can we accommodate three major festivals in four weeks? We had so when we so, did. When we did the brew festival the last time, we did it the second weekend in October. That's when it had been for, I forget how many years prior the festival had been done. But we we did make, after we paid all of our vendors and paid for the beer and everything else, we did make, I mean, I would have to go back and look at the exact amount, but it was just over or somewhere between five and $6,000 that we cleared for the event. Um, now, you know, no lie, it's a lot of work just because the sponsorships are so much different than with festivals that don't have a temporary liquor license. Um, but if it is something that will be able to happen post COVID, I think all of our events going into September and October are going to be way bigger than what they have been in the past because nobody's been able to have any. Right. And I'm, I'm just going to keep going back once again. Is it something that we want to, I think it's a bigger conversation than specifics. It's a, a broader conversation on what do we want to do during that time frame for the entire mm -hmm. community when there's already, those are, there are already events going on. Um, mm -hmm. So well, I think it, I think it, I think it merits a, a big more philosophical um, question. Amy, I, thought, I thought about right. that when they first brought it up and I thought about how, and Matt, back me up on this one, if you will, but the first two weekends in October are already big. I mean, everybody knows there's a line down the tunnel of right. trees. I mean, I'm thinking the third or the fourth weekend in October when we fall off the map, kind of, with sales. Yeah. Well, I think that's, I think that's a, I think that's a big conversation for the uh, promotions committee and we come back and we make recommendations after we had, we had that discussion. Cause right now we can talk about lots of things, but um, sure. I think we need to be more strategic about how we approach that and what's going on and well, what like is something, going on. Something to put out there to, to simmer on a little bit and, and bring right. up in the committees again. And then right. here we go. And thank you for Promotions Committee for starting to dive on that already. Yeah. Just keep us in the loop. I love the conversation. Yeah. Right. All right. Next up would be Downtown Enhancement Committee. Yes. The only other update I have is that I've heard back on the the challenge of our, you know, of the dining out challenge that we're, or takeout challenge we we're trying to do with the gaming license. They, because we are a city entity, it's, become a lot more complicated and we and the promotions committee decided that we think we should just let it go because we would have to go before council get council to res give us a resolution that we could do um 
gaming or raffles with within the city. I mean, so it became, you know, and then even that we're not sure we would be able to get um, approval from the gaming department. So just okay. That's hey. Thank you for checking into that. Those are, that makes sense. And I, that's just because we're being honest. Can you imagine how, right. we should be. how many of those raffles out there don't go in front of the gaming commission, just throwing that out. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. I and, know. And if we wanted to in the future, we could ask to go through the chamber or partner with them, possibly to do, do some sort of raffle where they put it under their umbrella more, but, um, but for doing it as a city entity, it just got very complicated. All right, okay. Third Street parking lot. All right, so I'm going to start with. Um, packet here. Okay. So we've heard back from traffic and safety. Um, control systems. And this is the cost that they have given us for the third street or the third street, spring street. I keep calling it both. So I apologize. Um, their cost would be $7,500 that they gave us the quote. They, they thought that the estimated cost for the concrete pad would be around $3,000 and the electric power installation would be around $3,000. So it would be a total cost of 13,500. I looked at the old survey of the um, schematic. Now, I had 24 spaces, but then I found another schematic and I wasn't part of this and it looked like it had 19 spaces. So these, I had, these numbers I had based on 24. I'm not sure which one the, um, was settled on as far as what, what schematic to go with. Um, I don't know if, if those of you that have a little bit more history with- Tim, the didn't you, do you remember the, the 24 is ringing a bell. Is, does that sound right, Tim? Because I thought we talked about the, the lesser and then we decided to go with the, the schematic that had or the layout that had more. I, I want to say 24, but I'm not sure. So I, not can we not just go count? Yeah, say it doesn't matter what the picture says. You got to go count the parking spots. Right. Yeah, hey, Keely's going to go count Tim, right just now. Run over there. <laughs> Not in mine, the one behind the burly <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, that's go count. <laughs> uh, so, I you guys, before you guys get too fired up about this parking lot, the it's the city's. It's not the DDA's parking lot. And the city's got, you know, three hundred thousand dollars tied up in that. And I really think you're gonna have a hard time getting that one past council that you're gonna take it over. So I didn't see this as taking it over. We had discussed this in that committee, Matt, where we were going to work together on projects that this would be a, that this would be a joint project. Um, right. I think our, our effort here would be to get employees off of the main drags and let um, let employees park separately. And if we just cover the cost of that, that frees up 24 spots a, a lot of the time. Um, it's not for me. It's not about the income as as much about the clarity of parking. Is that not something council is concerned about? Um, no, because it's a public parking lot paid for by public funds, and it should be available to the public. I think is would be council's stance on it. Um, uh, I think I, mean, I think what we were talking me. about in the enhancement committee is to do our homework on this and present it to you guys and let you make a call. If yeah. You're correct. It's not ours, but we're not gonna walk in there with a you know fly-by night suggestion. We have to do our homework first. This is the process. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're more than welcome to say no, but we would like to have, I, this is helpful for me just to know the cost and you know what we could generate, um, but let's just give it to you guys and let you make a call on it. It's fine with me. Okay. <clears throat> Then if you don't want the DDA working on it, then I think that the city should look at it the same way that what we're suggesting, which would be, as Kathy said, get 24 spots. I mean, from a, from a personal, 
in one hand here? From like my from my standpoint, I have a couple, you know, split shifts just because of how my business has to be run for capacity limits and what my rules and regulations are. And a couple of my staff last summer started at two o'clock in the afternoon. And granted, I know that there's a lot that don't necessarily agree with that we have a parking issue. But when you have employees trying to come to work at two o'clock in the afternoon in July and August, we absolutely have a parking issue. So we, they ended up parking at my house and my husband brought them down to work. So it would be nice if we had an area that whether it's paid for by businesses or individual employees or public, whatever, whatever the case may be, if people want to have a designated area, it would be nice to have something where employees coming to work in the afternoon or even in the morning, we had a spot for sure that they could, that could be used as employee-based parking. I, my, I mean, my employees are late all the time and they'll call from their car. I've been looking, I've been looking, I've been looking. Well, Justin gives rides if they want to come and park at my house. Just, kidding. Just, just one, just one other thought. So, for most of the week, um, the church parking lot is underutilized, right? Like not underutilized. It's full. No, that's where my employees usually park, and by the afternoon, you can't find a place in there yeah. either. Yeah. Well, I think I think the greater issue here is is that there is some concern about employee parking downtown, and not trying to address it doesn't do any, anything for anyone. So I think this is just an effort to try to address it. Whether or not it's the right issue, we'll find out. But somebody's got to start addressing this in some way that the city starts to look at employee parking down there and what we're going to do going forward. It's just not something you turn a blind eye to and go, well, you know, it's just the way it is. We're going to do it. Uh, that isn't doing anybody any good either. So whether or not it's what council wants, you know, who knows? I agree. But I think it's a, a reasonable approach, and I believe there's plenty of uh, cities you can look at that have public parking that's permitted. And uh, whether it's through the use of meters or through a seasonal permit, you know, you've got to start addressing this issue because it is an issue. It's an issue with tourists, it's an issue with employees and everyone else. So you've got limited space. That's all we're trying to do. Margo, do you want to share just a real uh, quick recap of the survey you sent out, what the um, DDA members sure. thought about it? It was quite a range. It was, it was. So, um, you know, I sent out the survey really as a, as a needs assessment of what, how our businesses, I sent it to all of the businesses in town. Um, yes, there were definitely people, there were, there were, people that were opposed to, to doing any sort of permit parking. And in fact, a couple of people emailed me and after I emailed them back and we had a nice discussion of that we weren't looking to implement or even consider, you know, like street parking or anything like that, that this, that several businesses have reached out to me or to the DDA expressing their, um, you know, interest in having, being able to lease a permit, you know, a, a spot for this, particularly for the season that kind of drove this whole conversation. And then they said, oh, okay, well, maybe I would even be considered. And so they, they ended up kind of switching their, their um, even their response. What we've received so far was that 13 respondents said that they would um, be interested in leasing one space. Five respondents said that they would be interested in leasing two spaces. And two respondents said that they would be interested in um, leasing three or more spaces. Um, in a in a lot. Um, What's the math on that? How many is that? If we add it up, uh, it's hold on. Um, and then Keeley, I think, is back, right? I think it was twenty spaces. Was it thirteen, five, and two? Let me go back. It was thirteen, <laughs> and then there were yeah. So then five. So that's tw already 20. that's twenty eight. If two, if five people want two or more, yeah. Um, and then two want three or more. I mean, three, so it's three. well over yeah. um, what you have. Yeah. So Keely, Keely have has available. the real numbers for you. Okay. There's 16 spaces in one handicap. In one handicap. Wow. There's only 17. Okay. 17. Okay. So this shows us that the business people downtown feel that there is a need to move their employees 
to a spot that's either easy for them um, as well as not taking away from visitors. And I'm hoping that if we present this to council, they'll see that we we have done our homework. So these are the questions that were that I included on the survey. Um, One other interesting thing that came up in the downtown enhancement meeting is um, we're also likely going to get requests from like, what if DeVos wants to buy the whole parking lot for their people? That we may need to have some criteria, you know, that DDA members get first choice, or I don't know. I think and I didn't put any. Idea. I didn't put any cost into the survey. Just would this be something you'd be interested? In? Would do you feel that this is something? Um, I left it very general. So that's that's really where people came back. Um, so now that we have some survey results and we have a cost estimate, are we ready to take this to council and let them have a conversation? So I reached yep. out to, to Lindsay yes. over in Charlevoix too, because they used a company, because I know John Leo um, mm -hmm. in our downtown enhancement um, meeting, I don't know, I, mean, I think somebody brought up getting another possible quote. Um, okay. I reached out to Lindsay, who they used um, was a company out of California, which kind of seems for what small amount that, you know, we're only doing it, interested even in a gate with a clicker. Um, it seemed a little bit um, overkill to, to go to somebody, you know, to need to go all the way to using a company out of California for that. Um, this is the this is the quote that we got. Um, this is the, would be the gate and the and after Tom and I discussed, um, he definitely said not going with a keypad route, but going with a clicker route because it would be less costly and it would also um, not require as much concrete or electric work to be done. If, if council would like another um, bid on this, we could do that. I don't know, we have to put it out for a bit if that's what they want. I just kind of like to get their take on it before we um, proceed. And then when we go back to the conversation of the joint sharing committee we had a few months ago about you know, cost and sharing. Uh, again, for me, it's not the income as much as the, the need to mm -hmm. obviously need a need that the businesses are showing and to assist the businesses by opening up parking spots. So are we ready to go to council with this? I think it's ready. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I agree. All right. Let's um, downtown enhancement committee. If you would like to gather, uh, before the next council meeting and perfect this, we can do that if Margo, if you need us. I will not be at the next council meeting. I am having surgery on that. Oh, that's right, you are. Then so. can we take it to the one thereafter? We can. All right. The next council meeting Which, after March wait, there won't be one. one. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. April um, 19th. Well, uh, Kathy, you could present too, I'm right? I'm happy. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. I, I can present. I'm going to be in. I will be in a different time zone for the next one, and I'll probably be sitting by the pool. But I can indeed do that. <laughs> okay. Or we can talk in the downtown enhancement. Let's do that. What? Um, who does it? But I will. I will. I be can do it. Totally unavailable. I would prefer okay. not to wait a month. No, I mean, we should, Thank you, we Kathy. should clean it up, and, and you know, obviously, you know, do some type of PowerPoint presentation and then some type of recommendation. Like, okay, let's have, have all the costs go back to paying for, for this, uh, for the devices that we have to do, and then going forward. And, and Matt, I would agree that the city paid for that, but I would also agree that the DDA paid for multiple parking lots in the past as we try to figure out creative ways to try to get money to help the city because we are trying to, to help the city as well. You know, is there some way we can do a joint thing on this? Margo and Kathy, if you can give me the information that you want to present by next Wednesday, so that way I can prepare a memo to council. Um, right. Two questions I'm going to be looking at. Obviously, this is good information from the survey. Is the main question we look at is the legality um, from from um, using the DDA using a general funded uh, thing to make revenue off of. Usually, the DDA in itself can can make money off of its own properties, but whether or not it can make money off of a general funded property is a different question. So I'll have to, I'll have to just run that by Jim Raymer just to make sure we're, 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 we're okay with that. And I talked to Margo about that last week, I think. I mentioned it to her briefly that it might be an 
might be an issue. And that, again, for me, it's not the, I know that Matt, you're always telling us we need to make money, but on this one, I see a, a bigger problem than finances. And that's a good point, Victor. And if we can't, you know, if the DDA can't make money off of it, maybe we present this to council and maybe this is something that the city wants to do because it could be a generate, you know, it's twofold. One, it, it could generate revenue after you pay for the fixed costs, but two, you are taking, there, there's a need or a want for some of the businesses to utilize this. So you're taking people off the main street and putting them off, you know, off-site parking, uh, off-site, but a little bit ways away. I think, I think it'd be good for the city, even if the city paid for it. And then the city collects the $20,000 a year or whatever it is. I totally agree. I, obviously, our businesses have a need. And we have shown that people are willing to pay for that. Um, let's just see where council wants to go with it. So Margo, you and I will get together on this and get this Great. to Victor by Wednesday. Great. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank if you. I have, if I would have, let me just comment on Dana's comment about like DeVos's. I don't think I don't think whoever it is we should let anybody just buy the entire lot. We're talking about leasing, remember? We can't buy city property. Well, no. Yeah. Leasing yeah, figuratively speaking. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. But you know what? It's not our problem. If if the city if council's taking this, um, it's up to them. If it's up to us, we'll have this conversation. Correct. Okay, let's move into the next hot topic, tree grapes. So the tree grates, um, we got only what we only received one bid um, when we put, put the project back out to rebid and that was from Harbor X. Um, you can see it in front of you. The costs did not go down that much, even though we removed both the trees and the electric from the project. I think this is just a result of contractor prices going up and this was, uh, you know, a risk that we knew we were going to take by rebidding it. And, um, and, and honestly, I think at this point, for this scope of project, we now know the numbers. We know what that level, you know, the level of that type of full scale project is going to cost. Um, and so as it went up, uh, was uh, in discussed at council on Monday, it's been now going to be shelved and until there's appropriate funding, um, if, if, if council chooses to, to resurrect the project at some point. I'd just like to bring up two points. So um, one is the first time we bid it out, Harbor X was the, the highest bidder. And then I think the other problem is, um, I think going forward, this should be a learning thing that maybe there needs to be personal phone calls from us to everybody that might possibly bid on it. As John Cup said in, at the council meeting, he wasn't even aware of it. And I just think to get one bid, it's, you know, never would be competitive. So next time it comes up, that's that's uh, I agree. would be a good way to pursue it. So at the moment, everyone, this is off the table. And enhancement committee approved the, the removal of this from our of our efforts as well. Uh, council also this week said the same thing. This is not something we're going to proceed with at the moment. Uh, John Cups was very clear at council. He'd like to see us look at it later. Uh, maybe we look at this at a phased in project, you know, one block at a time over a three year budget stance that can be looked at when the uh, the capital projects process takes place. So it's not gone and forgotten, but set aside um, because of the, the actual cost involved. That leads us to part two in that with no grades coming in and the pits looking pretty pity as they are. Uh, what can we do for this summer to uh, dress them up, put flowers in there? And I think Mark was going to be making some approaches to some of the, either the garden club and or vendors to look at that. And I did, I, I sent out, um, so based on uh, the discussion at council on the tree enhance pit enhancement for this year, the DDA did offer to, you know, revenue share on that, but it looks like council wanted to take that and, and, cap that cost at $5,000 would end that they would be funding that, that um, the tree pit enhancement. So um, I am, I have reached out to one member of the garden club to see if this is something they would be interested in bringing back. I know it was a project that they chose. 
not to do over the past in the past just because it became so large for them and so much work for you know for them to maintain and care for if they are not interested then i will begin reaching out to um local landscapers and and see what you know what bid option bids that just they just out of curiosity and i don't know if this has been covered um but when this all started um i don't know five five years ago when it kind of stopped and started and there was the garden club in the city issue when tom richards was still in um there was somebody who had mentioned um, because the, the boxes were in disrepair that they had used in the past um, that, you know, that that could be a, a Boy Scout or Eagle Scout project um, to be able to do that. Would that be something that might be worth looking into with our local troops and then um, even going in through like a volunteer if we could get the materials and the flowers a volunteer for Boy Scouts or another community group that would be able to plant and keep that going because that was something that was brought up at a city at a city meeting um, when we talked about trying to figure out a way to go forward before the when the tree grates were initially talked about and the expense was an issue at that time. Would that be something that we could look at revisiting to to bring it back to the way Batoskis and Charlevoix's look? I would like to, uh, your first point there was boxes. And that was one of the things that was a conversation is did we need those boxes in the pits? So I would like that to be a question answered by either the garden club or those looking at it. That was a bit of a tripping hazard for some people. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't think that's a good solution. I don't think we need the, the boxes. I think we just need to build up the soil around and plant in there. But I'm not the expert there. So I'd like to get that answered. Yeah. My, my would... fear with just doing, you know, having just community groups do it other than the garden club, just because they have the expertise is that the people wouldn't have the expect expertise or the time to maintain it the way it really needs to look. And where if we're paying someone um, we, we know for sure that it's going to be handled and maintained and cared for throughout the whole season. And it could be really a combination because St. Francis kids plant every flower in Petoskey. So exactly. it could be planted, but then maintained by someone else. Let's get some prices back on that. We'll have a better feel for. Does well, anybody know how many boxes we're talking about? 38. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have yeah. any extra? Um... I think you're on meeting. So, so I think let's uh, let's get some answers back, and then you know, it, it's council's project. They did ask that they take care of it. So we need to do some, some uh, let the enhancement committee dive into this, get some numbers, and then let council take it from there. I, I, I have one quick question, and that is, is the 5,000 offered from council based on anything? Or would that just be uh, a number? We kind yeah, of did yeah, that based on, yeah, that was based yeah. on, well, we have 35 trees now that the new plan was 38, but um, just oh. a rough estimate of what Great. we think cost. it might cost, but, yeah. But we'll find out shortly. Yep. I have a question. Do Does the city of Harbor Springs give, well, I know they do, but how much of a stipend does the garden club get to do the flowers it that did, they're doing. It, it, did, it did give a stipend. I don't know what it was in the past because it's it's now been a few years since they stopped. Yeah, I think we give them maybe a thousand bucks a year, 2000 bucks a year to um, maintain all the gardens that they take care of. Okay, but good it, to know. It's not a lot of money. Okay. So, uh, are we ready to set tree grates aside for a bit? Yes. Please. This has been an extraordinary <laughs> amount of work that we've put into this project uh, over the last year and a half. And while it didn't end up with uh, a anything in the ground, I have really learned a lot. And this will carry us forward as we move into this project later on. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. That's, yeah, we'll finish it. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just happy with what I gave from it. Okay, um, Margo, your update. Oh, and it's just brief. Um, Denny formed a um, 
and I think council settled on the members this week of the Marina Park Committee. Um, I will be on it um, from, the, from the DDA um, representative and Dana will be on it as a citizen representative. Um, Denny, did you wanna say anything about it? I just, I think that we're going to be meeting, you know, the committee's going to be meeting. So as we start getting feedback from the DDA, from, from the board and also from um, the downtown businesses, um, then I'll have a good idea what to relay um, my part to the, the Marina committee. Now, Margo, just one thing to touch on is, um, so we're moving. So we, we did, we um, appreciate council making it a priority. Um, I think our main focus, cause it's such a big project coming up with a master plan for Marina Park. Um, to start with our priority is gonna be, what can we do in 2021 to make it a better location for outdoor dining, shade and all the above. And then they'll just be part of the bigger picture of doing something more permanent at Marina Park. Uh, we do have some challenges like most projects have. One would be funding. The other would be um, the challenge of working around what the possibility of moving the Marina Harbor Master Building. So that changes the project and the footprint for what we can work in. Um, but we'll get it done. Um, and our priority would be to make sure we have something going for 2021. And I'm pretty excited about um, actually getting something done at Marina Park. What's when that? are you first meeting, Denny? Do you know? Well, um, just contacted the committee uh, this week. There is some um, supporting documentation that I was going to send to the committee members so they have a little bit of history. Uh, some of that would be the information on, the, on moving the Marina building in that project. Also, there are several surveys we've taken, one with the master plan and one last year at this time with recreation. Um, any of those questions, comments, and concerns from the public um, that have directly um, related to Marina Park, I'm going to send that to the committee also so they have a good foundation. And right. meet. But we have some challenges with that. Is one is I understand that we have to get moving on this quickly so we can have something for this current uh, year. Um, but we also got spring break coming up, um, you know, other challenges, but we're, um, we're kicking it off this week. As long as we keep the Zoom format going, we can take part from anywhere. Right. But thank you for uh, your effort on this, Jenny. I think it's going to be a really big help. Thank you. One thing okay. that I, know, I foresee what will come up with that is I know Jody mentioned fire pits and, um, and that's something that, and not just for winter, but possibly fall. And I mean, that's something mm -hmm. you know, that I, that maybe the DDA wants to consider as taking on as a project and investment um, and that and the firewood to do something like that in that, in that space as we move forward. Just yeah, and, I, and Margo, that's a good point. I think part of the overall goal would be to make sure that this is a, a four season park and not just a summer thing, which would Agreed. include some of those amenities. Agreed. Right. So maybe we should have a path going forward whereby we discuss it as a board um, what we think the needs of you know downtown businesses are related to the parks. We can convey that to the committee. And another thought I had on that is that all of us have thoughts on what we'd like to see in that park. Perhaps we could just send those in an email to Margo and Dana, who will both be on that committee and and just let them filter through what we think as we represent the DDA. So if you have thought that would be to send, send our ideas to Margo and she can consolidate for discussion at our next meeting so that happen. we're providing the committee with um, one cohesive DDA needs and wants list as opposed to 12 people's individual. Now the, diff the only difficulty of that is we don't meet again until May. It's getting tight. All right. But, yep. Um, let's let's um, proceed with that. And we all need to be a part of this but we do have two months before and, and may, maybe it's going to be green outside and people will want to be sitting outside. So we've got, it's coming fast. Uh, this so this brings up a good question is, do we need to have, um, you know, an additional meeting between this one and the May meeting? Cause there's a whole lot of stuff coming up, I think, right. With what to do about the tree grates um, and how we're going good to find that and what to do about Marina park. You know, if we wait till May, it's going to be right on us. I think she's got a good point. Uh, we had, 
what is there really a spring break? Is, are people actually leaving for someplace yeah. this year? Wow. As soon as we possibly can. Yes, it's, yeah. it's March 26. <laughs> it starts March 26 and it goes that okay. week. So the kids have Friday and then that following Monday off. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will not be like the following that, even that following Thursday. I, so we could push it to the next the next one, but I, I know I will not. I could. Um, so why don't we do this? That's going to put us get, getting quite close, three weeks less than three weeks before a meeting. Let's just see where we are with our needs. And if we need one, we'll call one. So Margo, you and I will stay in touch okay. on this and see where we are. Great. All right. Okay. Tip, Tip reporting. <laughs> oh, can I, can I make yep. one comment, please, about yep. when Dana said, Dana said um, you know, what are the needs of the businesses? I don't, I don't think there's needs, if you will, from the businesses in the downtown area for the, um, for the marina park. I think one thing that I would just ask that the committee thinks of all the time when they're going forward is um, placemaking. And here we are now 12 years ago after Kathy and I went to that placemaking seminar, but um, I think placemaking and I've, you know, I've, I've got a couple of books on it in how you build a place where people will come. That's, that's really all that it takes, is. That takes care of the needs of the businesses. If we build it, does. If we build it, it does. they will come. It does. So like, if you were to ask me, what are my needs? I have, I have no needs except that I would like you to make it that people would come there. Right answer. And it, it would build business in the entire city. Good entire answer. I agree. And that's shopping good. district. Okay, great. That's a good, she's, she's right. That's, we need to remember that always that placemaking is important, whether it affects our business personally or not. Okay, we're getting close to our bewitching hour. Um, we've actually, we're a few minutes past. So TIF reporting. The TIF report, this is, we're still in the same report. The audit is still not finished for 2019. Okay. When that happens, we will continue. And I have no update yet from the attorney general's office either. It's been um, about three months. So it's about usually three to six on that. So we're, we should be close, hopefully. Um, okay. Other how much money is on the table with that? Is, is it, did Margo say 20,000 for this year? It's more than that, but you know, let's I'm not counting those chickens yet. Right. Um, let's, um, let's keep our fingers crossed. So other, other business, old business. Um, I've got a comment about the, uh, fire pits down at the waterfront for ice fest. Sure. Uh, I had a group of people that I got together to go down and uh, buy a cocktail at the pier and stand around the fire pits. And we got there at seven o'clock and the fires were out and that, on Friday night. And that was uh, very disappointing to the six of us. Um, so I think you've in the future when we do something like that we really have to um, make sure we follow through with it and did we know, say the, five to seven uh, it was five to eight black, but, oh so. okay and then we then we screwed up well yeah. thank well, you will no we had a we had a nice group of people out there starting at three by seven all we had were children and eight o'clock, Jody, and you have to stay open till eight. It's posted hours. It's the professional thing to do. You because asked you were, because you were coming down. Oh, well, no, I, no, there could have been others. Other She's right. That came down. I yes. don't want to get in a fight with you about it, Jody. I'm just saying, if you're going to be professional, you got to do it right. Yeah. You can't, you know, oh, it's inconvenient or there's kids down here. We're going to shut it down there were a steady flow of people around and you could have generated some uh, hype for this thing. Well, let's keep that in mind for next year. Uh, thank you for letting us know of that. 
faux pas. Um, well, and I think that's, that's not, I think that's not just for next year. I think that's something that we might want to do um, sooner sooner than next year. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Because yeah. I would like I I wouldn't mind seeing them sometimes on cold summer nights out there. Um, but Natalie's not going to do it every night. And she was the only one. Well, Margo was out there too. Um, again, yeah. what do we do? So maybe we just need a volunteer schedule. Somebody to attend the fire pit. Yep. That's it. Gotta just plan we, for it. If that's what you say you're going to do, then that's what you do. And we, we plan mm -hmm. for it and we, we build it into the program. So yeah. well, let's throw that's this good back to, to the promotions yes. committee and let you guys yep. uh, dis discuss this. I think it's a great idea. Thanks, Matt, for the yep. heads up. Good to that. know. Matt, I'm okay. sorry. Matt, I'm sorry about that. It was. Uh, hey, it's okay, Jody. <laughs> we, we it, was, it was. The, it was. It was. It was the children that sent sent Matt, uh, sent uh, Natalie over the edge. You know, trying to right. keep, keep them away from the fires. Well, again, I think that if we if we do it, and granted, yes, this year was a lot different and the fire pits were added a little bit kind of later in the planning game. But I think that if we we do do anything like this before, again, like what we did with the s'mores at Pearson's, we had two of us that man that were there the whole time. So we'll just make sure that we add that to our list to have if we do any kind of fire pits again for this event. Um, where it would be a DDA issue at that time if it was event driven, whether it's down in the park, if we grow this next year or we do it again out by the pier, we'll just make sure that we have a volunteer right. list and we have DDA members to man those areas from the allotted amount of times that we're there. So we just know that we'll make sure that it's handled and volunteer based so it's not just I mean, Natalie was working, so we'll make sure that there are volunteers from the DDA to make sure that that's handled properly. And and she was fine, but she actually, for as little as she sold in alcohol, she was working her ass off, you know, so. I, yeah, I no better, I've got to go. Yeah, I mean, we all have to go. So. All right. Can we move into anything else in the old business? Public comment. Thank you, Matt, for that part. And if not, technically we're not back again till May, but stay on, on the uh, on an open schedule. Should we have to come back together in April? We've got a lot coming up in the next few months as summer actually makes its arrival. All right. Okay. Thank you guys. Meeting adjourned. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Have Thank a great you. day. Enjoy the sunshine. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.